there's quite a fierce debate about the differences between male and female brains. And in adulthood, I think there's not much evidence that the brains are that different in ways that we should worry about or that are particularly consequential. But where there's no real debate is in the timing of brain development. Mm. It is quite clear that girls' brains develop more quickly than boys' brains do. Mm -hmm. And that the biggest difference seems to occur in adolescence. Mm. So what happens is in adolescence, we develop what neuroscientists call the prefrontal cortex. The prefrontal cortex of our brain is sometimes known as the CEO of the brain. It's the bit of your brain that says you should do your chemistry homework rather than going out to party. It's the bit of your brain that says it is worth maintaining a high GPA because it will help you get to college, which might help you in the future. And that bit of the brain develops considerably earlier in girls than in boys, between one and two years earlier, partly because girls go into puberty a bit earlier than boys, and that seems to trigger some of this development. What that means is that if you have an education system that rewards the ability to turn in homework, stay on task, worry about your GPA, prepare for college and so on, then just structurally, that's going to put an advantage the group whose brains have developed earlier in those exactly. particular areas. And that turns out on average to be girls. Mm -hmm. I think it's a great irony of women's progress that by taking the breaks off women's educational opportunities and aspirations, we've revealed the fact that the education system is slightly structured against boys and men because of these differences in the timing of brain development. But it took the, the women's movement to show that because the natural advantages of women in education were impossible to see when women's aspirations were being capped by a sexist society. Now that those caps have been largely removed, we can see that it's boys and men who are at a disadvantage in the education system. True. At the risk of sounding boring, let's collect the data first so we know what we're dealing with here. I do think that we should be strongly encouraging boys to start school a year later than girls. Mm. I think that should become the default in many school districts because of the developmental gap that there is between boys and girls. Because boys' brains mature more slowly, then them starting school a year later would mean that they were developmentally closer to being peers with the girls mm. in the classroom. Interesting. We need a lot more male teachers. It's striking that the teaching profession has become steadily more female over time. Only 24% of K-12 teachers now are male. That's down from 33% in the 80s. Wow. And fewer men are applying to teacher training year on year. And so we've seen this steady shift towards a close to an all-female environment. That has all kinds of consequences for the ethos of the school, for the way we deal with different kinds of behavior among boys and girls, for example. And so we need a very serious and intentional effort to get more men into teaching. The third thing I would do in this world where I have significant power to dictate policies would be significantly more investment in vocational education and training. That is an area where we do seem to see better results for boys and men on average, mm -hmm. and one that's woefully underinvested in in the US. The US has really bet most of its dollars on a very academic, a very narrow route towards yeah. success and less emphasis on vocational training. And that has actually put boys and men at a disadvantage. So apprenticeships, technical high schools exactly. are actually a really good way to help more boys and men.